Hello everyone, my name is Carlo Donaghi, I'm a Microsoft MVP. It's a really great pleasure to be here, to be invited and to be participating in this great event. Talk about Azure, of course, for everyone, quality and a lot of open source technologies for as well. I have here as my guest, uh, Sagi Sagizian, is an Oracle specialist and he will help me how we're going to ride during this talk is about acceptance tests. Accept, uh, I think it is, has more predictions than I to talk about acceptance tests. Can you talk a bit about that, I guess? Um, yeah, just say acceptance test, let's consider it as UI test also, like functional test. Yep, um, I will do my best to help and contribute in this uh, talk, webinar. So, um, I'm Saki Saksian, um, Automation K engineer for more than seven years, and also a uh, Oracle Java associate. Um, so, just I will give a place to you. Okay. Start, and I'm here for any any question or any suggestion. Yeah, I'm sure that you will. Uh, second, let me ask one thing: acceptance test, UI test. Me as a developer, I usually think that's enough to just have unit tests, maybe some kind of integration tests. But why should I care about UI? It's not to just run the application and see, okay, it's working and it's everybody, everything's there. Um, the short answer is no, it's not enough. And to go to the tests, um, yeah, there should be UI tests, unit tests, there should be uh, integration tests, but we shouldn't forget about the endpoint user uh, who is doing everything together, like um, from the user perspective. And the UI automation, like acceptance test, is mostly to have the happy path, to check the happy path and understand that the all together integration is working fine. Just uh, to have that backend integration tests are working, it doesn't mean that it's working with the UI and uh, the UI is connected to the backend uh, perfectly. So the acceptance tests are usually to check that uh, happy path and from the input to output one, at least one path uh, per functionality to make sure that it works and is acceptable. So it's like automating the classic tester that we have today that you call clicker tester, something like that? Um, <coughs> partially yes, because we still need a manual tester who uh, can do monkey tests, who can do smoke tests, uh, who can do cross-browsing tests, uh, actually can also cover the cross-browsing stuff, but um, I mean, doesn't, it, it, it's uh, depending <coughs> on the on a product and which browser are covering, but yeah, manual testers of still need to test plan to uh, at least to do that monkey stuff uh, and uh, for example to do um, like when the computer like the system is under pressure, how application will uh, behave, <coughs> that, that kind of stuff that un unautomatable, I would say. Wow, so. You really need to be safe and create insurances that you're never going to release anything that's broken. You're always testing every feature that you have in our solution and application from the user perspective. That's what you're saying. Uh, not everything, but the happy path. Because every, it, it's too expensive to uh, write the UI test for everything. So, um, to, Always we should uh, remember the test pyramid, which says the um, first priority is uh, unit test, second priority integration, then in the end, the top of the pyramid coming a uh, uh, UI test. So let's uh, always remember the pyramid and put the acceptance test for uh, a main, a main uh, acceptance criteria. So, um, now there is the ability to have a UI unit test, <coughs> uh, which will help to uh, test UI like harshly, and just have an acceptance test for happy path. Okay, um, you said that uh, tests are really expensive to run, so that's why we cannot create all the tests possible. <coughs> I remember one time 
time that we were discussing about that, that I asked is, can we add replication of each body that we find in the system or the clients find and open a system for us? Then we'll be sure that that bug will never happen again. And that you said to me that I was going a little bit crazy about that because otherwise it would be really long the test. Yes, and running the tests like a certain test with the Selenium library is really really expensive to run because they are slow and like hundreds times slower than the unit and integration test. So uh, the one that you are talking is mostly like about the root cause analysis, uh, which finding the gap that we had before that result the bug. Uh, but in this case, it it doesn't okay. Uh, it doesn't matter if you have a selenium test or UI test. Maybe the bug that we missed uh, during the core implementation can be covered in the UI level. We just missed something in the UI level. Uh, so unique level also like <clears throat> we should find a place exactly where it was the bug and uh, make coverage for that. But to have uh, every bug with the UI UI test coverage is yeah just a bit uh, crazy. Okay. Uh, let me uh, no just ask nothing. I start saying like as a developer, I was saying that it's uh, for the first time maybe first time developers. It's weird to fake those kind of tests, but you are also a developer, right? You're not just a clicker or you don't use that kind of recording all the action that you're doing on the laptop. You're actually are writing code. Yes. yes. Uh, all those information that you write, it's code lines, right? Yes. <coughs> well, that, that's why you are a, a Java... A Java certified official. Yeah. yeah. And for that, we are using all open source solutions, right? We are, we are using Selenium for that, Java. Yep. We also run that. Then anything else? Any else? Oh, IntelliJ. Uh, yeah. That's also uh, free. I don't know if it's open source, but it's free. I think if it's open source, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, but instead of uh, IntelliJ, it's always, you can use Eclipse, which is open source. I mean, as an ID, but <coughs> yeah, it's distributed. Yeah. And we have used in the our examples test, test engine, which is also okay. Open library. So okay, let, let's see so how we can create those tests and let's run some demos here, show how it works, like some samples of all testing, and let's see how much time we want to spend on that. Uh, you see if it's as low as you were saying. Okay. Okay, here we go. Let's create uh, one demo here. How to we're going to create an uh, acceptance test using just Java and Selenium for web apps. Okay, uh, we're going to use Selenium because it's the most popular and open source tools and it's really, really powerful to create acceptance tests or UI tests for web applications. Uh, this application runs over Java. So to program it, I'm using here IntelliJ. Uh, IntelliJ is also, it's not open source, but it's a free tool from JetBrains. It's really, really cool to write your acceptance tests for Selenium. So here I have just a small example how to do a quick login on a web page. So here it's really clear what has happened here. I mean, uh, I just created a test that I should log in with some valid credentials. I'm open a login page here. Uh, actually, I'm open the home page, and from the home page, I'm asking from the home page to go to the login page. Inside the login page, I'm asking, oh, please log in using my test credentials that everybody will be there. After the login, he will return my, to the home page because the web, that's the natural behavior of my web application. And to assert that everything was okay, uh, I need to check if the customer's link is displayed. Okay, so if it's displayed, so it's true, assert everything will be fine. So it's really easy. Open the application, go to the login page, insert the credentials, 
and validate if everything is fine. Okay, so this is a really, really simple that will guarantee that uh, the happy path about doing credentials is working, and that's really important and has a great value when you have this kind of test, but before you deploy them to product. So you take the the branch, the current code that you are about to deploy to production, you publish it somewhere just to run this test, as we talk about with Sagis, and with only test, only data made proper for testing. We run this test to check if it everything is all right, at least the most important of the process that we have, and it's guaranteed that probably mostly everything will be fine. Okay. So, I'm going to run this locally now. Let's verify if everything is running okay. So, what he's doing now, open the browser, access the website, click the login page, sign up with the credential, click on the login button, waiting for the page being uploaded, check if it's the menu appear, the menu, that the option, the customer's link that only should appear after I am logging in. It's everything there, so it's fine. Process finishes with exit code zero. That means that all tests are passed. That's great. Okay, let's go to the browser. I will open as an incognito. Access the website. Click on the login. Enter my credentials. In the login button. Okay, I'm logging in, so I can close. So that's exactly what this test is doing. Way quicker, completely automated, and that's why it's way quicker. But still, creating a lot of acceptance tests, it takes longer because there are things that we cannot make it faster. For example, we need to wait for the login, for the page to be loaded. We need to wait to go from one page to another page. We need to wait for a post back. We need to wait all HTTP requests and go on. So sometimes we need to click, 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 click and check. And but to achieve all those clicks, take some seconds to do that. And if you have a really large project, doing all these tests will take in a while. The current project that I'm working on right now, we have uh, almost 100 uh, cases of use tests, 100 acceptance tests, that if you run locally, takes over an hour. And try to imagine that after each uh, code pushing, that the developers do and then create a pull request to the main branch, we needed to run all the acceptance tests for that because we need to be sure that the code that the developers touch it are not going to break anything from the main branch. Also, if it's broken, the developers need to go to the test and fix it. Like in other unit tests that if the developers broke, he needs to check why the tests are failing now. If it's something because of the code that he changes, he needs to fix it again. Otherwise, he needs if it is something about the business logic that I changed, so that means that he also needs to change the tests. Okay? Uh, but how we can take the advantage of have this kind of test and cloud infrastructure with Azure? Uh, we have components that we can make that run in containers and that's really really cool so what we're doing now is that here i'm running this uh, as a basic test and now i'd like to run this as a remote test what does mean uh, on on azure i'm running this grid console this grid console it's just an interface for selenium that he is monitoring a several of containers, Docker containers, 
that we have running on Azure. Like that, I can speed it up several containers running that with which of them has his own browser and I will run tests in parallel. That's it. So here I have my, my container service, my cloud app, my URL, my URL. This is the port for the green for the grid console. And here are all the instances that I have available. So I have several instances here that I can spin it up my tests on Chrome and several here that I can spin it up my tests using Firefox. Okay, so let's run these ones. I change it here to remote. Also, I need to come here on my vanilla driver and ask to run remotely. Let's get back to my test. <coughs> Clean up everything and verify. Now he's running the test. If I start to refresh this page, I can see that one browser here is taken. That means that the test is running and the test is gone. So I could run this test on a container service. If I have several tests, Let's duplicate this one. So this will be my test two. And I ask to verify. We are going to see here that both tests will be running in parallel. So see, we have now two instances of Firefox running the test individually. One already finished. And it's done. So like this, we can create now completely scalable acceptance tests using Selenium as the automation of the tests and using Azure as the cloud provider and infrastructure, scalable infrastructure to host and run all these tests. Okay? And when we start to talk about UWP applications, right? Now let's get back to the Visual Studio and let's talk about a little bit about uh, UWP applications. So here I have an acceptance test for a UWP application as well. Uh, this is this application. It's it's this app UI basics. It is based on this universe Windows Universal samples on Microsoft GitHub repository. I just went here has tons of samples to build UWP applications here. I took the UI basics for example, just because, no reason at all. Uh, I just took this one because it's basic, nothing else to do, and that's it. So it's really, really easy to understand what he's doing, and I just need, oh, need some sample that should be already done. For that scenario, I already have running a virtual machine, also on Azure, and that has the application already installed here. So I can come here, and here's the web app that I would like to test. Okay, so that's the thing. Uh, when we are talking about acceptance tests, and we also are every time saying that everything should to have automations, uh, we need to have in mind that uh, it's okay to run those tests locally, but the most important thing, like the ideal scenario for that, is that you have agents to run those builds and those tests for you. And like, as we are talking about the test in a new UWP, a UWP application, it's required that it should be running on a Windows 10 machine. So this is a virtual machine running Windows 10 only. And just in case, uh, if you were going to create automations for that, you, we just needed to install and uh, build the agents here and run any kind of pipeline you want. Okay. Uh, on the company that I am working right now, we use, we use just JavaScript task runner for that, and one any flavor that you want, just to uh, 
uh, get the latest version of the code build using MS build to build the project we're installing the UWP application and running the tests okay for this situation that's what I'm going to do so it's a requirement that application should be installed on a Windows 10 machine and that's the test we're going to do we're going to click on the menu go to the buttons button section and we're going to click this button here and to assert of task we are going to check this information here okay that's it nothing to be worried about one thing that's really important and uh, it's not uh, natural it's not ready to fly to connect uh, an external application to map uwp components especially when we are talking about selenium Remember that I told you that Selenium is the most important tool that you have to create acceptance tests. To create acceptance tests for you, that be we are also using Selenium. What is the situation? When we got back here to the Visual Studio, I created here a UI testing, and if we come here about the testing, okay, I have my home page and my home page it's the type of menu page that means that uh, all pages that I have inside of my application that has a hamburger menu on the top this will be the same if you put some notes here we're going to see that the way that we're programming here is mostly like when we are developing and coding Automation tests for acceptance tests using Java for web. We can see here that I have a web element here, a get element by name. Also, I can use a get element uh, using CSS selector and everything else. Okay, because this is just a proxy, a facade between the C sharp and Selenium. So everything now with that we are doing. I'm going to run this task over Selenium itself. And to stay between, like in Selenium that you have the drivers that connect to the browser, here we also need drivers to do the same. So Microsoft is helping us a lot and they publish the Win app driver is still better, but it's, they're going and uh, doing a really, really great work about that because it's been already possible to start create some acceptance tests for UWP application that's really really has uh, really really has a lot of value okay so you just need to have this Windows application driver installed in the machine that you're going to run the tests at least it's where your UWP application will be installed and you can run it in the case that we am working this application it's a mobile application but doesn't matter i can run this application on windows 10 without any problem because it's the same code that i'm running and i can do a lot of tests of course there are several limitations especially if we are talking about remote testing devices nfc and gyroscope and whatever but still at least as we are talking on the beginning the happy path will be safe okay so here on the virtual machine i have the application already installed and here i already have the win app driver um, to run uh, i'm going to run here by the command line because i need to inform my win app driver from which IP I am accept, uh, waiting to accept the request. So in this case, this is the internal IP of this machine, this virtual machine. I just need to start it. Oh, I forgot. It should, I should run that command using administration privileges. So let's do that. Because Ok, 
OK. I already closed the application because we're not going to need it right now. I just need to copy this command here to initiate the WinApp driver. But first, I need to check what is the current IP of this machine. So it's 172.16.16. And there we go. Now it just waits some requests. Uh, let's just come back here. I'll just let this open because I want to see what is going to happen here. Right click, run test. And there we go. I reset the machine starts to receive some requests. Was running the test and that's it. So that the test is written. Look, we can see it here. Okay, let's run again. Maybe it was too fast. It's doing all over again. Oh, now it fails. <laughs> Open application menu button button click and it's great. Okay. That's just because uh, on the test, every time that uh, we create a test, we need to clean everything that we created. So here's the thing, the same. Every time that I'm creating a test, I need to close the application again. Okay? So that's what happened. Like when I run it again, I have some wastes, and those wastes what was the one that broke the test. Especially because if I'm planning to run that, run that in parallel, it's really important that uh, every time that I'm running, I should have no dependencies from one test to another test, and also I sh need to be sure that I'm not going to leave anything behind. So I run this on a virtual machine, and what about this is, uh, making this scalable? Here's the thing, like, I can select here which machine I am sending instructions from the test. So it's not that complicated if I created here an array of virtual machines that are actually ready to run a test. And I say, okay, it started to run my pipeline there. That's it's uh, just a JavaScript with some task manager to let run or go and I can ask to run that on those machines that and uh, that those machines will do like that they're going to uh, clone the code again they're going to pull the latest version of my code all of them are going to have uh, Microsoft build on that they're going to build the project install the UWP and from here from one machine not this one, of course, not locally, but from all machine, I can start to say uh, for each test that I have, select one of these machines. Let's say that I have four machines, so I can run four tests in parallel in UWP against a new UWP application. Okay, this is not a problem, not a limitation at all. Here, I, I could show you how to run the test, uh, acceptance test of a web application and also a UWP application. It's really, really important. It's really lovely how it works that we can share knowledge between the tests that we have inside the Selenium tests coding and we can bring that to the C Sharp using the Windows app driver offered by Microsoft. Okay? And that's it. So, we make it run using the Selenium tests, the web applications. We make it run locally. Then we send that to the high-scalable machine on the cloud using the grid. Right? Then we can run all the tests in parallel. And also, we took an UWP application we host that on the cloud, like at least a test uh, installation application, and we could run the test remotely. So I can have an agent machine that 
just sending, oh, test this for me, for the machine. And if I do small touches on my code, I can run that in parallel as well. Yeah. So uh, I was just wondering here, like, if I'm running, and uh, if you are running that in parallel, is there any situation that I should be aware about one test can overlap the other one or something like that? Yes. Um, your all tests should be uh, undependent from each other. If you have a dependency between the tests, you will have uh, flakiness in the test. So the best way to uh, find out if your test in the end, like in the final end, your test has a dependency to each other or not, uh, just run them in a shuffled order and to make sure that there is no flaky test when you are running them shuffled. Uh, the easy way is just uh, create a test data per per test case, not per class, not per suite, and clean up for every test to not um, force the data to disrupt other ones. So mainly this is like most application specific uh, behavior because there could be application that no one cares about the existing data and just creating the testing on the on the fly and that is not not going back to check what's happening in the um, existing with the existing data, uh, but the, there is a lot of cases that you need to just clean up yourself to not make the flaky. So just uh, here there is a rule that just clean up for yourself. So every test should create something and clean up for the uh, after itself up in the after method uh, to make it more stable test. So for each test, I need to just write a scope of tests. So every time that I yeah. start, I create every variable data that I need to run the test, and run the test, and then I need to remove everything and include another thing. Yeah, the best, um, um, one of the best ways to do that is uh, to create an um, uh, API, um, which will create the objects, mm -hmm. and to not do everything from UI, because it will be really, really extensive, to click yeah. and create everything, mm -hmm. then click and delete everything, and if you will fail during the creation part, your test will not be run, so you will not have a clear result. So better to create a data preparation with the API, mm -hmm. do the UI stuff in the test, and delete with the API again. So I, I will have for all my, my exceptions test, I will have the data that was made to the test, wondering only have that. Yes. Like if everything was okay, that would be the scenario, and I'm testing it. Yeah. Also, there is a, a one um, good approach to do um, is one test should check one logic. Sometimes when I'm saying one test, one logic, everyone think about there should be one assertion in the test. No, there could be more than ten if you want to check everything. But the logic, the the the, the step should should. Uh, Stick to one logic. I mean, uh, you should avoid to click, 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 check, click, click, check, click, click, check. Okay. No, mostly it should be like clicking, opening every time and check. You check something, you are closing the test, going and do that. Because uh, if it will fail in the beginning, you will never test the next step. Like it's not like okay, I will try to search something inside uh, an application that requires. Login and then yeah. click. So I, I should not do like login, check login, then search, check the search, then edit, check the edit. I should create one test yeah. for each case. Yeah, uh, yeah every, like almost every application has a login in the beginning, yes? Yes. And to, there is also, if there is a possibility, <clears throat> like for example, the web application is storing um, uh, API key in the cache mm -hmm. or cookies. Okay. So it's better to log in with the API, generate the API key and manually put it in the like okay. cache data mm -hmm. and then open the browser and the application will be logged in. Perfect. Then I don't need to log in for every test. You should yeah you will not log in from UI for okay. every test. You will like push and you will have just only one test which is checking the login functionality. So this is this everything is done just to win a time because this is the 
uh, framework and this is the way of the testing that spend a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And usually these are running on the clouds like Azure, uh, which is not not cheap resource for anyone. Like okay, that, that's why you would also, if you would have some scalable environment that we can enlarge if you need, or scale if you need to try yeah. about that, but also we can shrink if you don't need, so we can also save money. Yeah. It's also running a parallel is um, with not only saving them time, we also saving the money. Nice. Okay, I think that's it. I would like to uh, I'd like to thank you for your presence here to to accept my invitation to be part of this project. My pleasure. I would like to thank you for the event to invite us to give us the opportunity to be here. It was really really nice, and I hope you enjoy. So. Here is the, our contact, it's being displayed right now, so we can get in touch and follow us and ask anything you want. So I hope to see you soon in the next event. Ciao. Bye. All the time. <laughs> <laughs>